So you had two daughters, uh, Catalia and Xiomara, who were so three and one year old when they did sleep school. Can you maybe uh, walk me through what was your situation before to get them to fall asleep for naps and bedtime? Um, okay, so naps with Catalea was usually she would just say she didn't want to take a nap and then we had to like kind of fight her. Um, mm -hmm. It would take probably like for nap time, like usually 40 minutes to an hour. And then by that time, it's like, oh, we already spent like an hour trying to get you to take a nap. So she would usually take a shorter nap or too long of a nap. Um, and then Ciamara wasn't, Ciamara's always been a better sleeper than Catalea. The only thing is like, she would need me to, she would need to feed to go to sleep. And so I kind of like, not that I had an issue doing that, it just became more stressful because we were like, we spent most of our time laying in the bed with them versus like oh we could put our kids down for a nap and go do laundry or go do something so what ended up happening is mommy would end up taking a nap because I was feeding one and laying with the other one it wasn't consistent like naps would take place either in their bed in our bed there was just a lot of inconsistencies that was happening um same thing with bedtime cat delay it usually it got to a point where it was taking us two to three hours to put her to sleep and she wasn't staying asleep so it was like some nights like we literally like I remember one time like she had woke up 10 times and it got to the point where because I would like feed Ciamara when Ciamara would sleep Ricardo would spend time like trying to get Catalea back to sleep and so even though it doesn't sound bad like oh you're just going to put him back to sleep it was like sleep like we weren't getting and overall, like everybody would be tired, exhausted. Bedtime was like, it just wasn't pleasant. We were like, every time we'd hear them in the monitor, someone wake up, it was just kind of like looking at each other and being like, Ugh! like we were getting mad at our kids. And it was just becoming like mommy and daddy weren't getting sleep. Catalea and Ciamara weren't getting enough sleep. And then they share a room. So if Catalea woke up, CMR would end up waking up because they wake each other up. That became exhausting. So Catalea would make deals with us and we were falling for those deals where she wanted her sippy cup. She wanted this. She wanted us to read. She wanted her blanket. She would like throw her blanket down and cry for us to come into the room to get the blanket. She wanted us to stay in the room. She wanted us to lay with her. She wanted us to be in the rocking chair. She wanted us to stand at the door. Like it was just like we were doing everything to literally like I remember like I was sleeping in there so much in their little beds that I started to like my neck started to hurt like I wasn't getting sleep then our alarms were going off to wake up for work and it was just like I mean we'd be running late getting out the door because at this point everyone wanted to sleep then Captain and Seymour didn't want to wake up because they were tired because they spent three four hours up and they were finally crashing at like four in the morning and we would have to turn around and be up at like 6, 6.30 in the morning. So we got to a point, and I always thought like, okay, Catalea is getting older, it would stop. Okay, next year it will stop. Like, and she was like three and I'm like something like she's not sleeping. And I started to realize, like, I started to ask questions. I started to be on the internet, like what can help? Um, we tried a little bit of like melatonin. We tried like, certain bedtimes like, and we had a bedtime routine it wasn't like we didn't have a routine it just the routine was like three four hours like it just wasn't working and I just didn't know what we did wrong as parents like why our kids wouldn't sleep for Ciamara's sake like, it was just like she wanted comfort feedings like even when she woke up she wanted to be comfort back to sleep and that wasn't like helping me because it was like you're too you're you like well, she was like, when she started sleep school, she was like 20 months, but one, but it's like, you're old enough that you should be able to sleep through the night and not need mommy to comfort feed you anymore. And so then I thought, did I fail my kids? Cause I breastfed them too long. Like it just was a lot of like blaming. Um, and I know Ricardo was like really frustrated because it just was like not working for us anymore. And like, I felt like we were like arguing, like, why did you do this? Why did you let her stay up? Why did you let her take too long of a nap? Um, 
so yeah when we found sleep school I just part of me was like we just cannot do this like it's too much money it's not like why would we like throw money into something that we feel like our kids aren't going to respond to and that was probably going to cause like more tension in our marriage or more tension in our relationship because if we threw this money into it and it didn't work then it's like that's another blame um so going into it we were very like skeptical we didn't know what we were like our kids we just felt like our kids were very like weird they just didn't want to ever sleep we failed them somewhere in their life in their three years and so um the first week was tough the Amara within like the two weeks of sleep school two and a half she was really caught on like she was doing really good she was sleeping she actually started sleeping through the night and we actually at some point had to remove Catalea from the room because Catalea was not sleeping through the night she was still waking up like three four times and which was less than what she was it was less than the eight times that she used to wake up so we felt like okay we're getting somewhere it just didn't seem like enough so we thought okay we were like we thought the two weeks was going to be enough for Catalea but um, we went another week, we went into three weeks and then she started to get a little better. She wasn't crying as much, but once we had explained to her, like, well, we had to remove you from the room and you can't sleep with Sissy anymore because you don't, you wake Sissy up. She didn't like that at all. And that's when she really started to escape from the, so she literally was escaping from the hug, going into the room where we had Siamara and sleeping with Siamara, and then she was asleep through the night. So then we knew like, okay, Catalea wants to be with her sister in the same room, but how did we like, how were we able to accomplish that without her like, with her understanding the idea that you have to learn how to sleep, like you have to trust yourself to sleep. And so the team was still with us. We had finished the cause with Megan, but the team still stayed with us. And so, um, it probably took a good four and a half months or four and a half weeks for Catalea really to like understand the goal and trusting herself that she can sleep. Um, so we did end up moving her back in the room. We ended up having to secure her hug the way we were told to. And then we had to basically let her know. We did have to start over with Catalea um, with the steps what we started sleep school in July, like into July, I think the last Friday of July, and we're now in October. And I would say for the last month and a half, they've been sleeping throughout the night, like both of them consistently, like no wake ups. Um, even if Catalea wakes up for a minute, um, she puts herself back to sleep. Or if we like hear her that she's woken up, we'll go in there and she'll be asleep by the time we go in there again, like, or she's like soothe herself back to sleep. Um, CMR had a moment where she was waking up, but I think she was like teething. Um, cause a couple of times she's like had a fever, but outside of like our kids being sick or anything, like they usually don't wake up and they don't need mommy and daddy. I feel like I'm happier. Like I sleep through the night. I even wake up sometimes and I'm like, did the kids wake up? And then Ricardo will be like, no, they slept through the night. Or he'll be like, well, I heard them in the monitor, but they went back to sleep. So I'm happier. We're getting sleep. It actually, we have to wake the kids up now and they get cranky that they wake up because they don't want to wake up. Um, on most of the time on the weekends, they sleep in. And where before we weren't getting sleep in because so, everybody was just wasn't getting sleep. Um, I feel like it's a, it's a better routine. Um, sometimes they play with their dolls. And then once we brush their teeth, we put them in their hugs and they're out. Like they grab a book, some both of them kind of like sleep with the book or sleep with something but they just like they don't need us anymore like they they go to sleep on their own they love their hugs thank you and uh so just one last question because you've been really detailed in in sharing your story uh you, so you were both so ricardo and you nefertiti were both uh, skeptical about sleep school we have a lot of skeptical parents what would you say to them um, just stick with it. Like, even though I know that we're guaranteed like the two weeks and it's easy to say, okay, after two weeks, I want my money back. And don't get me wrong. Like, I think I thought about that sometimes, but I think with Megan assuring that the team was still with us and we were able to call, I mean, I even vented to the team, like, 
I just don't feel like Kathy Lee is responding to this. Like, I don't get it. And they would ask me like, well, what, what has she done that's good? And so I'd say, well, you know, I had to start thinking like, okay, she used to wake up eight times and now she's down to four times. So obviously like it's gotten better, even though it wasn't better. Like she wasn't sleeping through the night, but I had to like look at my child and say what the accomplishments were as well as I just stick with it. Like, even if it takes your child, like the four weeks, it's worth it. Like I promise there's an end. Um, as many years as we spent, like I spent three years trying to get Catalay to sleep and it took us a month to finally get her to sleep on his own. Like that three years versus a month, like it was worth mm. a month. And so you could be skeptical, but obviously you put your money into it. You were, you paid this much to, because you were, you've exhausted your options. And so what's another, what's another try? Like, if they read the messages I sent the team, if they like were in our like relationship with our kids and the way we were waking up and how mad of parents we were. And I have to, like, we have to get up at 5.30 in the morning. Like we get up to get ourselves ready at 5.30. If they understood like how mad and aggravated we were, like I promise, like there's, there's an end. Like it ends and your kids will choose sleep. Thank you. Ricardo, do you want to add something or I see you? Very I don't need to because I'm <laughs> Did she I cover all like, the bases, honestly. I just like I I really thought Catalea was never gonna sleep. Like I thought we were gonna be like this till she started like school or you know, like I just I never I thought I failed my child. You didn't. I think all parents were feeling very guilty when they don't sleep, but unfortunately it's very common. Thank you. Thank you uh, both for giving me some of your time and sharing your, your sleep school journey.